in an instant. Oh gosh, that is a monster tornado. From the moment it touched down to a mile wide tornado, it's the fastest developing tornado I've ever seen. Nature's fury, devastating Joplin, Missouri. You couldn't even see a funnel, it's a mile wide. And all you saw was a wall. Hundreds injured, many killed. One of the deadliest tornadoes in the U.S. in decades. I had a lot of patients coming in, you know, homemade stretchers made from their door frames, things like that. Leveling homes, businesses, and schools. I've never seen anything like it except on movies. I remember looking out toward the town and for the first time, I at first it, it was unrecognizable. I really didn't know where east and west and south were. Now, 10 years later, it's a community that felt strongly enough about their town to stay and rebuild. Joplin is again a thriving city, determined to rebuild. Can't believe that uh, Joplin has come back as strong. It's a day many of us will never forget. 161 lives lost. Homes, schools, businesses, a hospital destroyed. Very little left standing in that storm's path. Thank you for joining us. I'm Lindsay Shively. We are in Joplin 10 years after a deadly tornado came through. This is Cunningham Park in that storm's path and where you will now find several spots meant to remember what happened and honor those lives lost. Tonight, we'll hear stories of people surviving that tragedy and how the community eventually came together to rebuild. We start with 41 Action News anchor Taylor Hemness. Matthew Stevens showed me the street where his house used to sit. The tornado ripped through this neighborhood. When it did, it also took one of Matt's legs. That is the most obvious in a long list of hurt. On my bone in my left arm, I've uh, titanium plates and there's still a compound fracture of my tibia femur uh, and uh, sent my kneecap flying. I also endured uh, two spinal fractures, skull fracture, uh, uh, severe whiplash that's caused a bulging disc in my neck and a broken pinky. A decade later, Matt's body still gives him other tiny reminders of that awful day. It was about two months ago I pulled a piece of wood out of my head again. Exacto blades and uh, disinfectants, all of that, uh, pulling you know, inch pieces of wood out of myself uh, or glass, gravel, uh, and it still continues to this day. 41 Action News interviewed Matt in the hospital just two days after his leg was amputated. I wouldn't really mind waking up with no legs and no arms. I, I would still live my life, try and live it happily. Matt's goal is still the same, but 10 years in, it's not much easier. This has made me slow down my life tenfold, both uh, physically and mentally. The surgeons that operated on me said that I will be experiencing pain for the rest of my life due to the injuries, and they were not wrong. In the last few years, Matt has struggled to get consistent access to pain medication. He says some days his injuries hurt so badly that he's unable to get out of bed. Sadly, his mind is in just as much pain. A storm rolls through and uh, I shut down. All I can do is shake and cry. We spoke to Matthew here in one of Joplin's parks where the memorial to the tornado victims is located, but he told me he actually doesn't come here very often, choosing instead to go out into nature and quietly reflect on the events of 10 years ago. In Joplin, Taylor Hemnes, 41 Action News. The tornado that tore through Joplin that day was an EF5, devastating. It trekked east across the city, come right here through 20th and Indiana. And as the siren sounded, it intensified and it grew larger very quickly. The city refers to the tornado's path as the fish because it's actually shaped like a fish, the area of impact. It's almost a mile wide. It snapped power poles, collapsed concrete walls, crushed homes down to their foundations, and leveled entire neighborhoods. Drone video, our photojournalist captured 10 years later from Joplin's Cunningham Park still shows signs of the tornado with a clear path between the trees. Three billion dollars in damage. The tornado was on the ground for 22 miles and just 38 minutes. 
The tornado damaged six schools in the Joplin School District, including Joplin High School. This surveillance video shows the moment that the storm hit, blowing out windows, hallways, destroying classrooms. All of this happening on the night of graduation in a different part of town. The following day, this is what was left behind. Trying not to focus solely on the destruction. See this Joplin High School sign? People in the community changed it to say Hope High. This became such a symbol in Joplin for what was going on in this community as they tried to recover. I talked to the former school superintendent, the former high school principal, and the current high school principal of Joplin High School about where they are today. Caps and gowns, snapping senior pictures. It's days before graduation at Joplin High School. We'll get this set up for graduation here. After a drive through graduation last year because of the pandemic, the principal has been looking forward to this. Feel a little semblance of normalcy, if you will. It was as people drove home after graduation 10 years ago that the EF5 tornado hit. I can remember um, all the weather alerts going off on our phone. Most everybody had left. Uh, about 5,000 people were at the ceremony. Kerry Saketa was the principal then. He had stayed after the ceremony at a nearby university, then had to take cover. I started getting text messages that said that the high school was hit. You know, I'll never forget when I'm driving up on the high school and I saw it. My wife was with me and I just remember turning to her and, and telling her we lost hundreds, if not thousands of people in this. There's no way anybody could have survived this. Of the 161 victims of the tornado, one worked at the district. Seven were students. Uh, Will Norton, he was a student at, at Joplin High School. He was probably two or three blocks behind me on my home from, with his dad. If we'd have been five seconds sooner, we would have been past it. In 2016, Mark Norton described getting caught in the tornado's path with his son less than a minute from their home. 18-year-old Will did not survive. Because he was pulling over, you know, and stopping the vehicle. I can remember him praying and reciting scripture. I can't, and he kept praying to him. I remember thinking, gosh, he is so scared, but he's, he's, and I was, I had my arm on him, and I just, it was, but during that time, all the windows were blown out, the, the, there was pieces of plumbing and junk and, and steel going through the car, and, and it was picking us up and throwing us on the top like three different times, you know, and I don't know when I actually lost him. We were talking about meant to be, I think it was, I think it was, I was supposed to be there with him, you know, and, um, and witnessed that and he did so much for so many people in his lifetime. And After the storm, Joplin was mourning the lost and scrambling to help the survivors. I mean, everybody felt it. It was almost like scorched earth. I mean, the trees were gone or they were shaved off the top, the ones that were left. Houses were flattened. And somehow they had to plan for the future. You're just trying to think, how do you have school? The classes of 2012, 2013, and 2014 spent their junior and senior years after the tornado in a converted portion of Joplin's mall, and they made it work. First year was pretty tough to try to figure it out, but quite honestly, by year three, we were pretty good at it. Then in 2014, the new Joplin High School and Franklin Technology Center opened, a beautiful, sprawling campus. Once you get inside this room, where the wrestling room doubles as one of the massive tornado shelters. This is a six inch solid concrete wall and it will withstand an F5 tornado. And in severe weather, residents can seek shelter here too. Some comfort for a community moving forward, but mindful of their past. I just hope our kids realize or appreciate what they have here. Are we stronger than we were then? Yes. Um, that's not the way you want to get stronger. Move on and not forget and just uh, try to be better every day. We checked in with Will Norton's family. His father, Mark, tells me that the family has moved from the Joplin area, but that Joplin will forever be their hometown. It's also where you'll find this, the Will Norton Miracle Field, named after their son. This is a place where children with disabilities can play baseball through the Miracle League of Joplin. It's also home to Joplin's first all accessible playground. And while the pandemic postponed the most recent baseball season, here, the Norton family does say they hope to be back here volunteering once baseball picks up again. I'm Kat Reed reporting in Joplin, Missouri for the 10 year anniversary of the deadly tornado here. We're talking to people to find out what they are doing to make their home safer before the next storm.
In just over 30 minutes, the tornado destroyed about a quarter of Joplin, blowing away or flattening thousands of homes. It caused nearly $3 billion in damage, one of the largest amounts for a tornado. In fact, the penciled frames that you see here at the memorial are a symbol of the homes that were erased by the storm. Many homes now have basements or storm shelters, and people we spoke to said they have been through tornado warnings here in the years since. But new homes, steps have been taken to protect new homes and make them stronger in the face of storms. The I-team's Kat Reed looked further into that. The voices of survivors. The entire first floor of our house coming down. My entire building lifted up and then down. And images of destruction from the 2011 Joplin tornado are etched in Darren Dahl Melsather's memory. He vowed his family would never live in a home that didn't provide shelter from a storm. It's one of the things that kind of was a requirement for living here was having a tornado shelter or a basement. A safe haven submerged in his backyard and stocked with the essentials. We have water, we have food, um, we have a porta potty, we have an emergency radio. While the city doesn't require storm shelters like this one or basements, we found a lot of people are choosing to put them in to feel safer. You do see them many more than you used to see. For some, rebuilding without a shelter never crossed their minds. It just seemed like that that's where the project should start and you would almost build everything around it. Kevin Parker is the president of Parker Development, the company behind this duplex community. It was the first project started with state tax credits after the twister tore through town. In total, Parker's company went on to build 144 units. All of which have storm shelters inside. Some are underneath staircases, others bolted in garages. Joplin doesn't require permits for the shelters in homes or backyards, so it's difficult to quantify how many homeowners and builders added them since the tornado. In the 10 years between 2011 and 2021, the number of homes with partial basements actually dropped by about 700, but those with full basements went up by 700. Joplin left the decision to install basements or shelters to homeowners. They discussed making it mandatory but just did not feel that it was something that they that the city would want to step in and require. The city intervened in other ways to brace buildings for future storms. With the winds the way they were with this tornado, uh, there really wasn't anything building code wise that would have made a difference right the, the path of the tornado. However, right along the perimeters, uh, there were a th few things that we identified that would have helped. Joplin's chief building official, Brian Wickland, explained the changes involved these small pieces of metal, which give homes added protection against strong winds. This is one, one type of anchor bolt um, that's used in construction. Those anchor bolts are now required every four feet instead of six to ensure a structure sticks to a slab or foundation. The new code also requires more hurricane clips, which tie a roof to walls. If roofs aren't clipped together properly, then the weakest link can lift up and allow suction and therefore create the, cause the entire roof to come off. What was once rubble, now rebuilt. The I-Team learned in the past decades since the tornado, residential building has been soaring. The city issued 16,000 permits, totaling nearly $500 million. Replacing what had to be torn down. Rebuilding is not only possible, but it is probable. So is growth. We're completing about five homes a week. Houses that are hopefully more resilient the next time the sirens sound. You never get back the loss of life, but you can get back the structures and you can get them back uh, in a way that is improved. It is um, amazing to see what's happened in 10 years. In Joplin, I-Team reporter Kat Reed, 41 Action News. Many of us will also remember these images of the Home Depot in Joplin. When the storm hit the store, it lifted off the building's roof, which was holding in place concrete panels that formed the store's walls. With the roof gone, the concrete slabs fell inward while some fell outward. Several people were killed, including children. Many criticized the construction design and lawsuits soon followed. 
Chief Meteorologist Gary Lezak was in Kansas City working that night tracking this late May tornado outbreak, especially what was unfolding right here in Joplin. May 22nd, 2011, 10 years ago, the tornado touched down right behind me and grew to one mile wide and then blasted through these neighborhoods. We have uh, quite a bit of damage through the city of Joplin. Doug Hetty is the chief meteorologist at KOAM Fox 14 in Joplin. He was tracking this major tornado that day and quickly realized just how devastating this EF5 tornado had become. I remember that moment of finding out that we had the first fatality and it was still kind of on the east side of the city and then it was and then it just broke loose. In just one sweep of the radar less than six minutes the tornado touched down and grew destroying everything in its path. From the moment it touched down in under 90 seconds, it went to a mile wide wedge. The Joplin tornado touched down and grew to one mile wide very quickly. That could happen here in Kansas City. This is 119th and Metcalf. If it takes a 13 mile track off to the east northeast, it'll track across the state line, head right towards Lee's summit and be a disaster. If an EF5 tornado with nearly 300 mile per hour wind strikes Kansas City and takes a 13 mile path, from Overland Park, Kansas to near Lee's Summit before lifting, we could have just as many fatalities or more with thousands of buildings damaged or destroyed. But to put things in perspective, according to the website bookofodds.com, the odds of someone being killed by a tornado is 1 in 4.5 million. So while the risk is low, there is a risk. So it's important to have a plan of action ready to go to keep you and your family safe. And as always, stay with our team here at 41 and we will keep you advised. I'm meteorologist Gary Lezak. After the tornado in Joplin, that National Weather Service made changes, adding tiers to its tornado warnings to better communicate a storm's risk. Now there are three categories of tornado warnings ranging from least dangerous to most dangerous. Still to come, incredible survivor stories of helping people injured in the storm. Plus, the harrowing account from inside St. John's Hospital as the storm swirled around them. It was definitely a built to withstand the elements and uh, Thank God it did. The hospital destroyed in the storm rebuilt. It's now called Mercy Hospital in Joplin, then known as St. John's Hospital, was here in Mercy Park. I remember standing not too far from here 10 years ago and seeing St. John's Hospital, the building, one of the only things that seemed to be standing just surrounded by devastation in the storm's path. Now, here in Mercy Park, you see this open air chapel. When the tornado hit, one of St. John's Towers was rotated several inches on its foundation. One employee recalls that night. So we started taking cover and the windows busted and debris was flying. So there were nine of us in a two by two room with the patient trying to keep them safe. You could hear things, the building, you could feel the building shaking. So the whole time you're in there, you're thinking about, was today the last day I saw my family when I came to work? Are we all gonna survive and get out of here? In the immediate aftermath, a field hospital was established nearby to care for patients who quickly had to be evacuated. The tornado had a huge impact on the medical community, from the men and women who were treating patients that day to the weeks and months after. Taylor Hemnes talked to two doctors who were on different paths that day, but on the same path today. This is a story about tragedy, as are so many stories in Joplin, Missouri, but it's also a story about education, specifically for two people, both working here in the Freeman Health System. Ten years ago, she was graduating high school the day the tornado hit. He was a third year medical student who ended up caring for tornado patients in a parking lot. Who knew they'd end up working together, saving lives together here in Joplin? High school graduation is supposed to be a big day, but Callie Clark's memories aren't about speeches or tassels. One of the guys that I was friends with at the time was sitting right next to me and his dad worked in the ambulance community in the area and he got a text from his dad saying, hey, it looks like there's a storm that's going to come into Joplin. I remember they started reading the names kind of faster and faster. Callie and her family were on the road home from the ceremony when the storm hit. Siding was just flying by, you know, tree branches were flying by. They were forced to take shelter in a grocery store. Of course, cell phone lines were down. We couldn't get a hold of anyone. We didn't know the extent of the damage. At the same time, across town, 
Justin Wilberding, then a medical student, couldn't get past debris on his way into the hospital, so he spent hours in a Taco Bell parking lot caring for the wounded. I had a lot of patients coming in, you know, homemade stretchers made from their door frames, things like that. In the midst of that makeshift ER, Justin experienced loss that left a mark. I had a little three-year-old child that was brought in by their parents carrying him. He was lifeless and he had massive head trauma and you knew that he wasn't going to make it. And I had a child about the same age as that time. Now, 10 years later, Callie and Justin work together. Feeling better. You look much better. He's the doctor. She just graduated from medical school this month. Well, that sounds good. So. No more fevers, your white count's coming down nicely. Both of them say the tornado they lived through is part of the reason they're still here. The medical profession's altruistic, so you want to give back. So I think one of the greatest gifts you can do is give back to your community. And by being able to be a physician working in an underserved area, I think it really meets that need. The tornado made me want to do medicine here. There's always going to be people that are in the hospital that need uh, health care. The thing that brings the joy to me is when I'm treating people that are from my community. It's people I know, it's my friends, it's my family, it's my neighbors. Um, when I go in and I see a patient and we, we happen to know the same person, that is what makes it worthwhile to me. That's what enriches me. Taylor Hymnus, 41 Action News. The butterfly has become an incredibly powerful symbol in Joplin. Everything changed that night. And soon after the tornado hit, these stories started to emerge from children describing what they call butterfly people, either helping calm them or in some cases, keep them safe. Some people believe those were angels. So now you see all over town images of butterflies and murals, some way to help the community and these families try to recover from the storm. Others describe Joplin's recovery as a butterfly's metamorphosis, just emphasizing that this is now a city reborn. Thank you for watching our 41 Action News special report on the Joplin tornado 10 years later. We leave you tonight with the names of those who lost their lives that day, never to be forgotten.